6th of September, 2018. This was a very historic day in the judicial system of India when the Supreme Court announced that homosexuality is no longer criminal. 14th March, 2006, headlines in the Divya Bhaskar newspaper. The Prince of Rajpipla declares he is homosexual. 12 and a half years of history between 14th March 2006 and 6th September 2018. A lot of things happened. And today I'm here to share with you the struggles and what happened in these 12 and a half years to get to the freedom. The freedom not just to the LGBT community of India, but the freedom to the entire country of India, to all the citizens of India. Because a law, a colonial law framed during the British time rule, based on the Victorian moralities, mind you not an Indian law, was finally overturned by the Supreme Court. A law which does not affected the homosexual community, but also affected the heterosexual community. Yes, because this law says that even a married man and a woman, mind you, had sex, but did not produce a baby out of that, then both the husband and wife could go to jail for 10 years. However, the straight community or the heterosexual community wasn't affected much by this law because a married man and woman is legal. It was the LGBT community which was stigmatized and discriminated. So we knocked the doors of the court to change this law, which, which was not even Indian. And thanks to us that now all of us sitting here in this audience are free. We all got freedom. So after I came out, the first thing which happened, which was a turning point in my life was my first appearance on the Oprah Winfrey show in October 2007. That opened the gates to a lot of invitations coming from all over the world. And I took that opportunity because I believed that changing mindsets of India doesn't happen just in India. I have to go global, I have to go international. And I was invited by many countries, to name a few. Sweden, I opened the Europe Pride in 2008. I was invited by Sydney, uh, Melbourne, by the Indo-Australian Council, where I met several politicians, ministers. I was invited by the then president of France, Nicolas Sarkozy and his wife, Carla Bruni Sarkozy. Then I was invited to Sao Paulo. I did a show for BBC in UK. And uh, of course, I met the Canadian Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, last, last, last year, when he visited India. So meeting these personalities, meeting these celebrities, these people who could influence the mindset of India was very important. One of the very important persons I met was Justice Michael Kirby. He happened to be the first judge of a court in the world to openly come out as gay. He came to India in 2009 and he met a lot of judges, he met a lot of politicians, he met a lot of lawyers. Fortunately, one of the judges he met, Justice A.P. Shah, was the one who decided the Delhi High Court judgment. And again, for the first time, homosexuality got decriminalized by the Delhi High Court. But very soon, that law was challenged. Government at that time accepted defeat. But this time, it was the religious leaders who went against us. 
and they filed a, a appeal in the Supreme Court. And it was the first time in the history of India that all the religious leaders united, whether they were Hindus or Muslims or Christians, and even we know that even within religions they fight. But we created history then also. And all of them went against us in the Supreme Court. Fortunately, they won. In 2013, the December 2013, the judgment said that they do not consider the Delhi High Court judgment as valid, and we became criminals again. But before that, I had a chance of meeting Oprah for the second time in 2011. She was completing her show, 25 years of her show, and uh, she gave me a high five for that also, for getting a law change because of a uh, lot of efforts from all of us. But then we didn't stop then. In January 2014, we filed a curative petition in the Supreme Court. And very few petitions which are decided by the Supreme Court, because that is the highest authority in India, uh, get heard. And the Supreme Court felt that injustice has been done to us in the previous judgment. And therefore, there are only three curative petitions since independence have, which have been uh, heard so far, and ours was one of them. And the case was reopened, and uh, it was heard in the open court. A, a bench of uh, three judges was appointed, and this whole case was to be heard again, and again the religious leaders and everyone who's ever said that this is immoral, and it's uncultural, and it is against the order of nature, they were all heard again. And when I went to Sweden, I was invited by this, the, uh, the, uh, the people who organized the Pride, and the topic given to me was Swedish sins breaking barriers. And the first opening sentence of the speech, which I was addressing almost a crowd of 10,000 people in the world's biggest stadium in Stockholm, and the first line was, greetings from the land of sinful Kama Sutra. <laughs> I said, if Swedish people are committing sins now, we have committed sin 2,500 years ago, even 500 years before Jesus Christ was born. <laughs> we have Khajurao. We have temples like Khajurao, which have got open depiction of homoerotic statues and sculptures, which is a centuries old temple. I'd say homosexuality was imported, uh, uh, sorry, exported to other countries. We didn't import it, we exported it to the other countries. Religious leaders, I call them hypocrites, most of them, lost because they had no evidence to prove that we are unnatural, we are immoral. We have so many, so many, and so much of evidence in our literature, in our culture which says that we have gay gods and lesbian goddesses. We have a transgender goddess, Bhautara Mata, who is a mainstream goddess. She is also worshipped by so many people other than the transgender, including our Prime Minister, Mr. Modi, worships him. So they lost. And 2018, that is last year, we won. It was, I call it, uh, a dispute of humanity versus hypocrisy. This this is a very brief way I have summarized this whole law. And it was the hypocrites who lost, and we were on the humanitarian grounds. So friends, if you are honest and true to yourself, then you will always win. I owe a lot to Mahatma Gandhi. I am a great admirer of him, I have a lot of inspiration from him, that if he could have won India's independence on the basis of honesty, truthfulness, and non-violence, then why couldn't I give freedom to my people and freedom from this injustice and the stigma and discrimination? It was just a question of knocking the doors of the court to tell them that, look, we have an Indian constitution, we are proud of an Indian constitution, which is giving us equal rights to all citizens, right to equality, 
right to privacy, right to dignity and respect, right not to get discriminated. We are human beings. We are all equal. Why should we be denied certain rights when we have done nothing wrong except what? We want to love somebody we want to love. Is that a crime? Today I love somebody. Yes, I love a man. I am a man, I love a man. But that has happened in our culture. We have had Gandharva Viva, it is called. If you read our old texts, our literature, it used to happen. What is wrong in that? But still, I am a criminal. So, it was violation of the human rights which was guaranteed by our Indian constitution for which we need to go and, go and appeal to the court and yes, we won. I still remember, again no offence to followers of him, respected Baba Ramdev, <laughs> said, I will cure you. I said, okay, what do I have to do? He said, come to my ashram in Hardwar for three months. I will make you do some yoga and asanas and <coughs> things like that and you will become straight. I said, very good. I'm glad that something like that can happen. I said, I'll bring all my friends and their mothers will be very happy that their sons and their daughters are going to become normal again. They can get married and have a happy life. And this was on television, so there was a commercial break. And many all good things happened during the commercial break. So I went to Baba, I said, Baba, I'm, I'm very happy that you are promoting yoga and you're doing wonderful things. I'm, I'm very happy about that. But I said, um, three months, I think, are not enough. I'll tell you, you, do it, you, you take two months more, five months. I'm willing to come to your ashram for five months. But I have a condition. If in five months you are not able to cure me and you are not able to make me normal or straight or heterosexual, you come to Rajpipla where I have a palace. You come and be my royal guest there in the palace. And if you are not able to make me straight in five months, in five hours only, I will make you gay. <laughs> Are you willing? That was 2009 and this is 2018. I am completing my 9 years of Baba Ramdev. He hasn't accepted the challenge. <laughs> Hypocrisy. Hypocrisy means not accepting the truth. I said, Baba, you are a promoter of yoga and yoga has sevenfold path of Patanjali's. It's called the seven steps. Uh, and uh, sorry, eightfold part, Ashtanga Yoga. And the first step is Yama and Niyama. And the very first Yama is, uh, Yama and Niyama means do's and don'ts. The first very yama, yama is Sachai. Truth. If you are faltering in the first step itself, how are you going to go on the other steps? You know? So, I was just on, honest to myself. Yes, a lot of things happened in my life. I mean, you, you can go on my Wikipedia and see. My refugees were born, my parents threw me out of the palace, my, I was disinherited, disowned. A lot of things happened. My whole my life was in danger. I'll, I'll quote you. Uh, some of you might have seen me on this show called uh, Keeping Up with the Kardashians. That was another show which brought a lot of change in the mindsets of the people. I was featured on that show just uh, two years back. Chris Jenner, mother of uh, the Traditions. She asked me this question. So, what was the biggest sacrifice you made when you when you decided to come up? I said, Chris, the biggest sacrifice I made was my life. You can get a husband, you can get a home, but you cannot get your life back. And mind you, I was threatened by life. In fact, I met my own murderer. Can you imagine? I mean, I'm so lucky. I met my own assassin. He came one day to me and said, Sir, I want to talk to you something. I mean, I didn't know who he was. And I said, Okay, tell me. No, 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 come inside. And I said, Yes, what is it you want? He said, I was hired to kill you. 
Oh wow, then why are you doing? Why are you standing here? Where is your gun? Where is your sword? What about? I mean, I'm, I'm here. I need to do a job. No, sir, it, uh, it didn't happen because the deal got cancelled. <laughs> I said, well, thankfully here I am standing. So I sacrificed, but for a cause, and it happened. And we are, we are here, we are living in a free country. Yes, I, I, I am very proud of being Indian. I am very proud of our Indian judiciary system that it has given us justice. And it hurt us, we reopened the case. And see, we are all, the whole audience sitting here is, is even you will not believe one of the legal interpretation of this law says that masturbation is also a crime. So you can imagine, why this country carried these kind of laws which had no meaning and which were absolutely baseless. But yes, we are free now. The whole country is free. We are enjoying that freedom. But my work doesn't stop here. I belong to a warrior family. Our, my ancestors have been fighting wars for now 650 years. My dynasty is 13th century. I'll fight. The next war is getting acceptance from society. Because one of my favorite quotes is, gay rights are, of course, human rights, and cannot be just one in the courtrooms, but in the hearts and the minds of the people. Thank you. <laughs>